You're listening to the Magnetic Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Calandra Martin, intuitive brand designer for spiritual entrepreneurs. The Magnetic Boss Podcast is where visionaries come together to openly share wisdom and authentic conversations. I know that you are ready to leave your legacy in the world and become sought out in your industry. I also know that you are sick and tired of getting overlooked. You're ready to have a magnetic business. I'm here to help you create your magnetic brand. It's my mission to help you show up confidently with a professional, irresistible online presence. If you're in this for the long game and all in on the big vision you have for your business, let's dive in. Welcome back to the Magnetic Boss Podcast. Today, I want to talk about branding and design in your business and how to avoid the trap of working backwards and working harder than you actually need to to share your business with the world. This is something that I run into with my clients quite often, and it's one of the reasons why I have restructured the offers that I share so that I can support the women that I work with in such a larger and more efficient way. Because what I was finding was that a lot of people were coming to me expecting that they could design their website with very little preparation. And I believe that this happens for a couple of different reasons. The first one being that there is so much pressure in the online space to show up a certain way. And a lot of times that can lead us to believing that we need to have everything put together. We need to have a professional website before we can start making money in our business. And that's just simply not true. And I can speak to this because I didn't have a website in my own business when I was starting out as a virtual assistant doing various um, services for other entrepreneurs. I did not have a website I had my Facebook and my Instagram, and I had a landing page in MailChimp. So that's one of the reasons that I find that this happens. We think that we need to have that shiny website in order to have our website or have our business be ready to share and ready to promote. The other reason that I find this happening is because there is a misconception with website design that web design and branding go hand in hand. And while that can be true, and when you're working with me, they do because I work on both of those things, it is not standard for a web designer to also be designing your brand unless that is part of the package, unless that is part of your contract. And so what happened with me for the first couple of years in my business with offering branding and design is that people would come to me just for a website and they would be really excited to get their website ready and share it and launch their next offer or whatever it might be. And we would get on our first call and find out that they didn't have a color palette. They didn't have brand photos done. They didn't have a type suite. They had no idea what any of the visuals might be on that website. And some of the time, these clients would also not have their copy prepared, or they wouldn't have thought about the copy at all. In fact, they didn't realize that that was something they would have to do. And I share this because part of that was my own learning curve. I had to really go through this trial and error process of figuring out how to structure my packages, how to share what was included in those packages more clearly, and also to understand what my audience needed from me. So that's a little side lesson today. If you are a service provider, it's really required of you to get out there and get messy and work with your clients in order to create your own unique process which is why I'm so grateful that I went through some of these client experiences where it was a bumpy road and there was a lot of back and forth or there was a lot of extra work on my part in order to deliver the quality of work that I was hoping to share with my client. So going back to this idea of working harder or working backwards on your website, 
it's really important to understand that your website is going to be the forward-facing magazine or storefront for your business. It is not going to be the place where you design your brand, right? If you do that, if you decide that you're going to design your brand and your website simultaneously, it's going to result in you going back and forth and spinning in circles and getting lost. And also, quite possibly leading yourself down the wrong direction. What typically happens when I see people working on their websites, whether they're hiring somebody or they are doing it themselves, if they try to do the branding at the same time, the magic of their website, the strategy behind their website, the light gets dimmed because you're spending so much time and energy focusing on the branding and making it look good that you're not necessarily thinking about what is going on the site and what the user experience is, which is really the job of a web designer. Their purpose is to not only provide you with a pretty website, which I hands down love to do for my clients, making things look pretty is one of my favorite parts of my job, but there is also a really important factor which is the strategy, the intention, the user experience, making sure that your website is actually serving a purpose and it is working for your business. Because otherwise, not only are you going to be working backwards, but you're probably going to be losing a lot of money between investing in that website, building that website, and also the time and energy spent on making it happen because you might have to go back and change a lot of things if you're not designing it with intention from the get-go. Okay, so I think that I've made myself pretty clear. I don't want to stand on a soapbox today and tell you what you shouldn't be doing. Instead, I really want to put the process in front of you today so that you can understand what I do with my clients, whether you decide to work with me in the future or you work with somebody else, because I really believe that it's important as an entrepreneur, as somebody who is hiring a service provider, to have the full view of what to expect. I am personally somebody who wants to know all of the details before I invest in something. I am that person that reads through the sales page word by word, and then I read it again. (laughs) I want to be in control, right? I want to know every little detail about what I might be signing up for. And so I want you to know what you can expect, specifically with working with me, because every designer, every brand strategist is going to have a different process. But to prepare yourself and to have an idea of what you might expect and to be able to give yourself some starting points, some things to think about whether you're doing it yourself or you are hiring somebody. And these things are ultimately going to save you a ton of time, probably save you a bunch of money, and it's going to create a more powerful presence for you. When you're sharing your business, you really want there to be cohesiveness. You want there to be a foundation that you can always return back to because otherwise it's really just you throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing if something sticks. Now there's a time and place for that, of course, to an extent, but you want to have some sort of guidelines to keep you on the right track, to give you a reference for you to see what is working, what is not, what do we change, right? So very simply put, when it comes to branding, and designing your website, one has to come before the other. If you've been paying attention at all up until this point, you probably got the message here. So what's really important to understand is that your brand is going to be the way that you represent yourself everywhere in every single application. So a lot of times people think, oh, you know, my brand is just a logo and it's my colors and that's great and awesome. It is so much more than that. (laughs) When I talk about branding, and I say this all of the time, I want you to understand that your brand is a combination of the visuals, things like your logo and the colors that you're using and the fonts that you're using, and your energy, the energetics of your business, the way that you make people feel, 
the messaging behind what it is that you're sharing, the purpose of your business, the reason that you're so passionate, and knowing who it is that you help, right? Those two buckets, those two categories are a non-negotiable to have a brand that is consistent, that is cohesive, and that is memorable because you want people to remember your business when they scroll past your Instagram feed or they land on your website. So this is the work that you have to do first. Pave the way to expanding upon this. Lay the foundation so that you can put up the walls. We, our family, is planning on building a house in the next couple of years. There's a lot of planning that goes into that. There's a lot of intention behind it. And something that is a non-negotiable is first to figure out, well, where is the foundation going? And how big does the foundation need to be? And how are we going to structure the blueprints so that we can then build the house of our dreams, right? Same thing is true for your business. If you don't do the foundational work and you skip steps like branding, like understanding the whole reason behind what it is that you do and really knowing how your business is perceived by other people, then again, you're going to be spinning in circles. So laying this foundation is the starting point. Now, the first thing that's really important to look at with your brand is to know what your values are. Now, you're going to have personal values and you're probably going to have business values that may overlap. So take a look at those first and foremost. Understand what is important to you. And not only what is important to you, but why is it important to you? Because when you understand that, that will be your compass for doing things like market research and putting together your product suite and understanding your offers and the structure of your business. So look at your values, understand what the problem is that you solve, know this, be able to share the problem that you solve as if somebody on the side of the road was asking you, for directions, right? I want you to be able to share this with so much confidence, so much passion and certainty, because that is really what is going to drive home the energetics when people are perceiving your brand. If you don't believe in what you do, nobody else will, right? You have to be so, so solid in your purpose. So understand your values, know what the problem is that you solve, be very clear on that, And start to dig into niching in your business. And I know that niching is a word that's probably overused and it's something you've heard a million times and you maybe don't know what exactly that means. But essentially what this means is that you need to understand who you help, right? Who do you serve and what do you help them with? Very, very simple. And I promise you that the more specific you get with this area of your business, the easier it will be for you to put all of the other pieces in place. So for example, in my business, I love using my business as an example because I have gone through the trenches with this. I have been that person that couldn't niche down, that couldn't figure out what it was that I was doing. And when I found my place, when I understood who it was that I was helping, it became so much easier. Everything became so much easier the visuals, my marketing, the content that I write for social media. I'm really super clear on that now. But before, I was like, "Mm, I don't know, I help everybody, (laughs) right? I have women in business, simple. That's not specific enough, right? Because there are millions of people out there and they all have different problems. They all have different circumstances and experiences and perceptions based upon their experiences, So in my business, I now am very niched into helping spiritual entrepreneurial women, right? I help the women in the world of the woo, the women that are into the witchy stuff, the women that are helping people with different modalities and services, whether that be Reiki or business coaching and everything in between. There are a lot of different categories of businesses that I help within that niche, but 
if somebody identifies as a spiritual entrepreneur, they know that that is the experience that they are going to receive. They know that they are welcome. They know that they are understood, right? If I were branding my business as a brand designer for corporate women, it would be a completely different experience. The way that I would talk would be very different. The presentation of my business would be so, so different. So really understanding who it is that you're talking to is going to allow you to create this brand foundation. And it's also going to help you with the copywriting piece when it comes to your content marketing and when it comes to your website. So really be clear on this part and understand how that relates directly to your offers, right? You want your offers to be a direct relation to the person that you are here to help because otherwise there's going to be a disconnect. They're not going to be certain that your offer is for them. Now, with that being said, I want to remind you that just because you niche down into something very specific does not mean that you won't attract people from outside of that niche. So a really good example is in my business, I work with primarily spiritual women. I also tend to attract people that have dog-related businesses. I also tend to get referrals from people that are just outside of the spiritual entrepreneurial world. Maybe they haven't dipped their toes in that yet, but because they can see my brand and my style and the way that I support my clients and they have that reference point as to what that experience might be like, they have that clarity. They understand that they are too welcome and this isn't about you excluding people from your business. This is about putting a big old welcome sign on the front of your door that says, come in, you are welcome here. Okay, so I could keep going on this, but I want to make sure that we get through the entire process of what it looks like to work with me one-on-one so that you know what these individual steps might be for your own business. So understand your values, understand who you help and how you help them. Know this so, so well because this is going to be your compass for everything else that we're going to talk about today. So once you've done the energetic work, right? You've under, you have come to understand your business inside and out. Then you can start really mapping out what your visuals might be. This is where things get fun. This is where we get to tie strategy together with putting your own unique flair on your business. And this is really what is going to set you apart from a initial reaction from your audience, right? Somebody is going to see your visual branding and know right away, uh uh-huh or uh uh-uh, right? They're going to be like full on, full body yes, or "Mm, nope, that's not really for me, right? When I chose the branding, my most recent branding for my business, it was like that puzzle piece that was missing finally turned up and everything came together, right? I finally felt like my visual branding matched my messaging and it matched the market that I am promoting for, right? And when that happens, you have that synchronicity, you have that harmony between your energetics and your visuals, it becomes so much easier to show up. So I want to dive into the visual process just a bit. If you want to see more about this process and really the timeline when it comes to working with me, I won't get super specific with that today. You can go over to my website, colandramartin.com forward slash branding, and I have a visual of the timeline of the 12 weeks that we work together inside the brand incubator. Because There are some pieces of the visual branding that are going to overlap with one another. And what I typically find is that the visual branding process is going to be different for every single business because you might have clarity on one piece of this more than another. And so one area might need more time and attention. One area might need more revisions and refinement. And so give yourself flexibility with this and just know that this is a fluid process. It is not a linear, here's our deadline. We're going to figure this out by X date 
Because if you put that pressure on yourself and you're working with somebody who's putting that pressure on you, to be quite honest, you're likely going to make decisions that are not in alignment, that do not feel true to you. So while it is important to give yourself a deadline so that you're not procrastinating and you're not putting this work off, it's also important to be realistic with your expectations. So with the visual process, there are a couple of pieces that come together. I've mentioned them already, but we'll go into more detail. So when we think of visual branding, a lot of people think, oh, I need my logo. Okay, let's work on that. Well, here's the thing. Your logo should be a reflection of all of the other pieces of your brand. Your visual branding is really going to be like a recipe that has a special ingredient and if you miss one of those ingredients something will feel off and things will be more difficult. Now I'm not the best cook in the world but I do know how to put a brand together to make it feel cohesive so stay with me here. So the first thing that I like to start with is a visual collage of photos that move you, photos that inspire you. Now, if you've had a brand photo shoot done before, then this will be really helpful because in most cases, hopefully, fingers crossed, your brand photos came out and represent you in the best light, right? They came out incredible. You love them. You're obsessed and they make you feel really good about yourself, right? I'm hoping that that's the case if you've had brand photos done. If you haven't had brand photos done, we could look at things like stock images and collecting photos from Pinterest that give you the feeling that you hope to create for your audience. This part is really important. So this is not about choosing an aesthetic that looks perfect and that looks like it's on the industry trend, I actually advise against that. Because if you go on Instagram right now, you will see a pattern in the aesthetics. A hundred percent. Because everybody is using the same tools to edit their graphics. Everybody is seeing what everybody else is doing. And so they're going to try to choose something that helps them fit in. The entire purpose of your brand is so that you don't fit in. I know I'm yelling at you right now, but I really want you to understand that this is not about fitting in. Designing your brand for your business is about helping you stand out. So when it comes to picking the visuals and using things that inspire you, I want you to be looking at your real life day-to-day experience. Now, some of the things that I like to ask my clients just to get their brain going and their ideas flowing is around their wardrobe and around their home decor because chances are you are expressing yourself in your day-to-day life the same way that you should in your business. There should not be a disconnect between how you show up online and how you show up every single day at the coffee shop, at family events, wherever it is that you're spending your time. So if somebody were to meet you offline, we want them to have that same exact experience, that same exact feeling. So this is a really good starting point if you are feeling overwhelmed. What I like to do with my clients before we even get on our first call, before we start working together, this usually is something that I do the moment that they fill out the questionnaire to apply to work with me in the incubator is I'll go over to their Facebook profile, and I will look at some of the photos that they have posted, specifically photos of their personal life. Maybe they're posting a photo of them in their living room, or they're posting a photo of them driving their car, because in the backgrounds of these photos, there is a lot that I can pull from them that is going to give me an idea of how their energy can show up in their visual branding. So a couple of things that you can do with the visuals. Start with brand photos if you have them. Grab stock photos and see which ones speak to you that move you. Go on Pinterest and look for things, aesthetics that you feel inspired by. Maybe this is a home office. Maybe this is uh, a kitchen, a living room, whatever it might be. Some of these interior design aesthetics are going to be really great points for you to start with in your branding. 
Now, if you already know what colors you have in mind, if you are a purple person like me and you know that like purple is going to be in your branding, hands down 100%, start to look for the tones. Really pay attention to if you are looking for something bold and vibrant, if you're looking for something dark and mysterious, something soft and airy. These are some of the questions that I ask on the questionnaire when somebody begins to work with me because that is going to be the starting place for your visuals. So pull together a collage, put this somewhere that you can reference, and then start to pick out the colors. And I like to use a color palette um, selection tool from Adobe. If you go to Adobe Color Wheel, you can find the exact tool that I use. You can import a photo and they will extract a color palette for you. So if you have a photo that inspires you, you can then pull the colors from that photo. I'm giving you all of my secrets today. So with the visual branding process, look at your visuals, your photos, start working on your color palette, and don't go crazy here. I don't want you to have a ton of colors. I want this to be very specific. And we could talk more about color psychology and matching that with your brand strategy and your audience and making sure that those things align. I'm not going to dive into that today because this episode is already a lengthy one, but really know that there is a lot of intention that should go into this color palette, that should go into the imagery that you're using, as well as the other two pieces here, which are your type suite, the fonts that you're using, the typography. There's a lot of different uh, words and jargon that I could throw at you, but to keep it really simple, you're going to be using fonts on your website, on your social media graphics, and all of those fonts should be consistent. They also should look really good next to your color palette and your photos. You're going to see when something feels off by combining all of these elements together, which is why all of my clients get a brand mood board that really puts everything side by side so that you can see what that might look like on something like your website. Which is why if you start your website before you do this branding process, you're going to be all over the place. I've seen it before. So you want your imagery, your color palette, your typography, and you want to be looking at the textures and the patterns or additional illustrations and elements that you might be using to add more personality and depth to your branding. This is like the cherry on top of the sundae. If you don't have these textures, patterns, or illustrational illustration elements, then your brand is probably going to feel kind of boring and flat, and it's going to lack personality. So what I recommend is getting over to creativemarket.com. This is another one of my hidden secrets. And you can find so many different brand assets there that are going to help you really build a cohesive look and experience for your audience. And then once you have all of these pieces in place, you want to be really specific on the applications for each of these items. So within your color palette, you want to know what your core colors are going to be. What are the colors that you're going to use for the headlines on your website? What are the colors that are going to be your accent colors for things like buttons and calls to action? I promise you that the more intention you put behind your branding, the easier it will be for you to design a website for your business or to have somebody else design a website for your business. These are some of the things that Clients would come to me without having, expecting their website to be done, and that required so much extra work. So I just want you to understand the process, what goes into this, what to expect, what to prepare, and if this is something that you need support with, to know exactly what you should be looking for. So going back to the visual process, Once you have your mood board for your brand and you have your guidelines on the applications for each of those elements, then you can start working on your logo. Now your logo is going to be something that does take a lot of intention. 
there will likely be quite a few revisions and you really want your logo to be something that does not expire (laughs) is the best way that I can share it with you. So what I find is that a lot of people will create a logo that is very complex and has a lot of visual elements when in reality it is going to benefit your business so much more if you keep it simple. So you can choose whether or not you have a typographic logo, which is literally just a logo with the words in it, the name of your business, that's all people see, or if you're going to have a visual element. And once you decide upon that, then you can decide if you want a rectangular logo, if you want a circular logo, if you want a logo that is going to be printed and put on labels. These are all things that you want to be thinking about prior to that design process because again, the more preparation and intention that you have in your branding, the easier it will be for the pieces to come together. So that in a nutshell is the visual branding process. It is extensive. There are a lot of moving pieces and If you are somebody who gets easily overwhelmed or you get lost in the creative process, then it will probably be helpful for you to have somebody to keep you on track. Whether you are doing that design yourself and you're sharing it with somebody else to get their feedback, to get their reference point, or you are hiring somebody to do it for you and with you, really just know what you are going to need the most support with. That is going to help this process immensely. And once you have done the foundational work that we just talked about, I know this is a longer episode. I hope that you're finding it to be valuable for you. I really hope that you're taking notes. You can always go back and listen to this episode another time. Share it with somebody if you find it helpful. But once you have done the foundational work, then you can dig into the design strategy for your website. Then you can start mapping out the copy and the user experience and understanding where your brand elements are going to go on your website so that there is flow, so that people aren't getting lost or they aren't getting overwhelmed, especially from a visual standpoint. So in order to make your life easier, in order for you to not be working backwards or making things harder on yourself, I cannot recommend enough that you start with your brand foundation. If you are super curious on what the incubator is, what the brand incubator experience is like, and everything that I've said today is getting your interest. If you are curious to know more, you can go to my website, calandramartin.com forward slash branding, and I map it all out for you there. The other piece that is going to be helpful for you, whether you decide to work with me as your brand designer or not, is to fill out the questionnaire that is on that page. You can hit the apply now, and it will bring you to a form that asks you some of these questions. Going through that process is going to give you a lot of clarity. So if you are feeling like you need to do some of this work and dig into the foundational pieces, I highly recommend that as a starting point. And to also start putting together a visual collage of your visual brand elements. Because if you have them all over the place, There is a good chance that things are going to get overwhelming and busy and confusing, not only for you, but for your audience too. So you can go to my website, learn more about the incubator, start this process for yourself. If you are looking to invest in your business and really dig into this work this year, I highly recommend applying for the incubator. There are only a couple of spots open for quarter two and quarter three of the year. I am keeping my calendar pretty limited this year with our big cross country move happening in the fall. So if you wanna get on my calendar and work with me directly, that is the best way to do that. The monthly payments start at $500 a month and I always am flexible with making this a process that empowers you and allows you to step into your potential and really radiate everything that your business has to share with the world. So until next time, I am sending you so much love and can't wait to hear what your biggest takeaways were from this episode. 
Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe wherever you are listening so you never miss a beat. For episode show notes, visit calandramartin.com forward slash podcast. Your iTunes reviews and your sharing of the show helps us reach more magnetic bosses just like you. Until next time.